I tell the preacher boys that uh, you ought to not react. If you lose your temper, you ought to plan to lose your temper, not lose it on the spur of the moment. I teach them that you ought not to, <coughs> you ought to have a bomb in the closet somewhere. I teach them you ought not to use it. You ought to just have it there, and every once in a while, let the people walk by and look at it, let them know it's there. But I said only once ever, two or three decades, do you need to drop a bomb. Well, the bomb's out of the closet tonight. And, uh, and all amount of letters you write me when this service is over, first place, I know who you are, and I won't read your letters if you sign them. And I won't read unsigned letters either. So I know who you are. You get tough about it, I may just call your name. I'm in the name call this mood you ever saw in your life. I really am. I mean, I, I didn't choose the weapons of this warfare. They were chosen by somebody else. And they decided to enter the name call in business. So we'll just, uh, we just uh, let them choose the weapons. Since they chose them, I, I'll use the same ones they use. And you say, I don't think I'm going to like this. Well, I don't give a hoot whether you like it or not. I'm, I'm mad on purpose. I'm righteously indignant. I'm fed up to my gills. And I'm going to unload the whole truck before I leave tonight. And <laughs> I don't care if every deacon on the board doesn't like it. You can just sit there and listen to it and vote me out when you get through. And I'll go across the street and start a good church. I, I'm, I won't be intimidated. I won't be frightened. And nothing you can do can stop me from the course of action I'm announcing tonight. And my course of action is not, listen to me, my course of action is not just for tonight. It's a course of action that will continue until this garbage is over. And uh, so you just uh, sit tight. There is a there is a planned plotted uh, a pl plot right now. Th this isn't this isn't over Jack Hiles. This is over fundamentalism. These are evangelicals fighting fundamentalists. That's what it's all about. Th this their, and and their and, and their effort is to destroy Hiles Anderson College. Over my dead body, they'll destroy Hiles Anderson College. Bless God, I've got some friends around this country too. You don't think I've got some friends around this country? Let me just show you the last two days' mail from people across this nation. Our friends are legion. We got some enemies, but no new ones. Just stronger old ones. And their effort is to destroy the First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana, and I'll go to the finish before I let it happen. So, that's what's been happening all these years. It's been going on. I was in Wadsworth, Ohio. Brother Ray Young often writes me a nice letter, a little note of appreciation and love that greets me when I go somewhere. The pastor took that letter and he said, this is a, a letter for you, Dr. Hiles. He said, I hate to give it to you because I know the ones that came before you got here. And some liar had written letters before I got there telling Brother Powell a bunch of lies. But, and Malvi are old ones. That's all we've got. We haven't got any new enemies. This old man's been through a, through a few storms in his life. I remember one time, 33 years ago, when I was just a kid preacher. Will you guys pick those up and put them in here and just keep it? Bring it to my office after service if you would. <coughs> Thirty-three years ago, a deacon turned against me. Seems like that's the pattern. Don't get don't get nervous. It'd be plainer than that after a while. After a while, you'll hear what deacon. Sit still. 
A deacon turned against me. Southern Baptist leaders tried to make me count out to their program. A lady spread some dirty rumors about me in Garland, Texas. A tornado came and destroyed our educational building. In the midst of all of that, I made a quiet little speech to my people. I said some things, and I'm going to say them tonight. This is almost a repeat or a quote of what I said. I'm talking a little slowly so the reporters can write and keep up. <laughs> Won't you put this for Hammond Times headline? Heil says Hammond Times manure spreader. <laughs> put that in your headline. Well, you won't put that in your headline. You won't do that. You won't give the fundamentalists a chance. So you sound like you're mad. You are as close to being right as you'll ever come in your life. I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a patient man. And brother, you're looking tonight at probably the most patient preacher in this country. I mean that. I, I guarantee you. Uh, you, see, you see, you're bragging. Just say what you want to say. I don't give a flip what you say. You said it all anyhow. I mean, I don't know a preacher take what I've taken the last five years. And I've not fought back. I've not, I have not fought back. This may shock you. I never met the man I was afraid of. Never met him. They haven't made him yet. Never met him. I don't care who you are tonight. I'm not afraid of you. And what you've done, you see, the fact that I tried not to fight, you mistook that for being afraid. Uh, the reason I didn't fight is I was afraid for you. The devil hates those souls being snatched from hell. And brother, any Christian that doesn't like it when 1,428 people get saved one Sunday needs to get on his knees and get right with God. They've attacked Mrs. Faye Dodson. Mrs. Faye Dodson win more souls in a week than some will win in a year. But well, she's divorced. I know she's divorced. Wasn't her fault. She's built herself on her own, built her uh, life back, and raised her up on her own bootstraps has trained more ladies in America to be soul winners than any lady in the history of our country. Started more foster clubs and soul winning clubs than, than Susanna Wesley and, and Florence Nightingale and, and all the rest of them put together. You preachers have her. Have her in your church. Let her be. Now Mr. Sumner, Mr. Nischik, and Mr. Godfrey and Walt Hanford have made some mistakes. I can walk in the pulpit with a broken heart and you'll never know it. I turn the other cheek. Still do. I love those that hate me. I bless those that curse me. I do good to those that hurt me. And I dare anybody to check my record. I dare you to check my record. I'm not a guy that seeks revenge. I'm not. And I'm not seeking revenge tonight. I'm just not going to let you destroy this church without a fight. That's all. I'm not going to do it. A fellow called Ms. McKinney and said, uh, I was supposed to speak there a week from tomorrow morning and Tuesday. He lives out in Colorado. What town was it? I think I'll announce it. In Montrose, Colorado. I think I'll just announce it. Um, he said, to Ms. McKinney, he said, I'm going to cancel out Dr. Hiles. I want to have him someday later on. It'll be a cold day in where the booger man lives before he has me, I'll guarantee you for sure. In other words, after the battle's over, I'll have him. Now then, cancellation's coming in. Because a bunch of people haven't got the guts to stand for what's right. And any time anything is put in a, any kind of paper, it just must be true. Most of the stuff put in papers are lies. Yeah, some of you said, that's not very Christian. But you're Christian, aren't you? You can smear anybody you want to. That's Christian. 
Who ever told you that I'm supposed to be a better Christian than you are? You say, you, they're liable to kill you. I hope they do. I'll be in heaven and you'll know what scoundrels they are. Number 17, I'll tell all I know about those attacking my friends. And I'm already investigating some very interesting things. I got two or three things that are hot right now that if, if, if they keep on attacking, I'm investigating when I find out they're true, if I do. Now, I won't do like they do. I won't, I won't tell a bunch of stuff I can't substantiate. I won't do that. I won't do like Mr. Sumner does because Mr. Nistic says something to him, he prints it as true. I won't do that. If they turn us in to any institution or organization, they will likewise be turned in immediately to that same institution or organization. If IRS looks at me, they'll look at them. Because the day I get my papers from the IRS, the IRS will get a visit from me. And it may be interesting to find out what they've done with some of the money I've given them. I'm not saying I'm going to win, I'm saying I'm going to fight. I may lose the fight, but I may take a few teeth with me. Now let's put this into perspective. This is the greatest soul winning church in history. Satan wants to destroy it. America needs Hiles Anderson College. And Satan is trying to destroy it. If he does, I'll be there at the Alamo. Ladies who are visiting have already had three strokes. It's so long since you met a man you didn't recognize one you heard him. Hello, Jeff Dollar here. Uh, just a few thoughts to conclude this sermon that we had just heard. Uh, I recall 30 years ago, approximately, uh, getting that sermon, making copies of the sermon for the purpose of giving it to other staff members in our church to defend Dr. Hiles. I sat and listened to that sermon myself, and then I realized that there was a great deficiency in that ministry and in that man. Uh, his legacy lives on. Uh, I, can, I recognize preachers when, uh, that have been under his influence. I could tell by their preaching, by their style, by their doctrine, and it is a very dangerous thing. Uh, the dangerous, the, one of the most dangerous things about that style of religious experience, being involved in the uh, extreme fundamentalism, is that they inoculate you against being able to examine other things. You know, if you attend a church, you go to visit a church, you, uh, want, want, you know that there's something not quite right where you are, and uh, you want to visit another church. Well, you visit that church with a very critical eye. You know, the people aren't dressed right, or the Bible version is not right, or the music is, is not, not right. And all, all these things are, are so ingrained in us that it's a very difficult thing for us to, to ever visit another church. That's something that you need to get over. You know, there are many other churches and pastors that, that you can examine uh, that, that will uh, teach the Word to you, that, will, uh, that, 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 that show the example of the Lord Jesus Christ in their ministry, that expound the Word of God, that they're not uh, preaching in a way that is uh, uh, exalting self or uh, exalting particular uh, ways of thinking or doctrine above the Bible. You know that, that they're out there, but they have to be searched for. Uh, you, you, but the, the the thing is, you have to have the right mind for it. And if you're involved in this type of ministry, then your mind has been stunted in the sense that it's not able really to properly evaluate things. We always look through 
uh, everything with the fundamentalist lens. You know, that I, I experienced that myself. I found it very difficult to attend even churches of like faith. You know, the Baptist churches that I would attend, if they weren't right down the line Jack Hiles uh, in, in the style of preaching, in the doctrine, in the practice, in the Bible versions, in the music, all of that, uh, that all these, these peripheral things became the main things. And because I was indoctrinated in that, I wasn't able to be comfortable in a church. And that, that's, that stays with you for many, many years. You know, there's much damage done to my family uh, that, that I had, had uh, perpetrated upon them, and for which I'm very sorry. And the purpose of these videos, you know, I have, I have no personal uh, vendetta against uh, Jack Hiles. You know, he's long gone, or any of his followers, or the school, or the church, or anything like that. But the purpose of this video is for the people who are searching. You're involved in these churches. You know that something's not right. Uh, you hunger for something more. You hunger for the Word of God. You, know, you want the Word of God taught expositionally, without all the, the, the fanfare and the yelling and the screaming and the theatrics and whatnot. You, you, you want the, the, the Word of God preached in a way which is, which is going to, to uh, uh, strengthen your soul, and you're not getting it. And you never will get it in those types of churches. Uh, these churches have taken some of the errors of, of Dr. Hiles, these modern IFB churches that, are, that uh, follow in his ways, have, have magnified uh, his errors. Uh, the idea of soul winning and repentance and all of that have gotten much worse under the followers uh, than they were under Dr. Hiles. At least under Dr. Hiles, there was some semblance of orthodoxy. Uh, a lot of his errors were kind of under the radar, but not these guys. And these guys blatantly deny the, uh, the fall of Adam. Uh, they, they deny the depravity of man, things like that. Uh, the, the reason for this is to try to help lift people out of these types of churches. Uh, they're not helpful. There are other churches out there, and sometimes we have to give a little bit in, in some of our our thinking in order to find the right kind of a church because uh, be honest with you we what we've learned uh, makes it very difficult for us to be comfortable in regular churches I'm not saying to go to a, a an apostate liberal church or anything like that uh, but, uh, I would never recommend any type of a liberal church uh, just simply to get out of a fundamentalist church obviously uh, but you need to find a, a decent uh, church that teaches the Bible expositionally, that has a real, real born-again minister behind the pulpit. You know, uh, just because somebody gets up and hollers and waves a Bible around doesn't even make them a Christian. You know, I was reading George Whitfield's journals, and George Whitfield warned about the ministers of his day. And this, of course, was prior to the, the, the days of the American Revolution as he went around, went around preaching in fields wherever he had opportunity, and sometimes 10,000 people would come to hear him preach. Uh, but the, the churches many times were closed to him because the ministers were unregenerate. It's very possible that a large number of these ministers, like Dr. Hiles, I, I don't know his heart. I, I, I only met him twice when I was there. Uh, I did not find him a very personable kind of a, of a minister. Uh, but. Uh, I, I don't know his heart. I, I, I could not know his heart. I don't know where he is now, but in, what concerns me is a lot of the uh, stuff that went on in the, in the churches and some of the things he said in his sermons, his attitudes, uh, were that of a, a carnal person, an unregenerate person. And you'll see that in some of these preachers as they uh, insult others, as, as they uh, delve into uh, doctrines which are, which are uh, heretical, and as they attack other other preachers you know, and condemn them to hell. Uh, so then, I hope this this video was a help to you. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment sec section. Uh, we really do want to be a help to deliver you from this way of thinking, to deliver you from the bondage 
of this type of religion. Uh, I, uh, uh, what, what concerns me is as a lot of people get involved in a church like this, they give themselves entirely over to it, then they see the things that, that I saw and they just completely turn away from Christ altogether. Now obviously to do so reveals an unregenerate heart, uh, but, but my, my goal is to try to reach those who really are saved, or you're right at the verge of being saved, you're, you're examining Christ and you happen to be, for whatever reason, in a church like this and you know there's something not right here. The purpose of these videos is to show you that there is an alternative. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank you for your time and may the Lord bless you in your search for truth.